program, but uh, I think it's on the homepage. Sorry? Oh, the, uh, the, no, the, the, the organizer is not written on any of the uh, handout that you gave us. Oh, I see the organizer is. Yeah. Oh, well, we're happy to do all this work for free. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm surprised I thought that, but okay. But it's written on the homepage. It is written on the homepage. Yeah, yeah. Let me take a give all steam. Medium. Yeah. Yeah. All right, welcome back everyone. Our next speaker is uh, Lars Hesselt from uh, Copenhagen and uh, Nagoya. And he's talking about topological cyclic homology and the fog fontaine curve. Take it away. Uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for the invitation to speak here. It has been uh, a great joy to be uh, at a, a real conference again with real people. And uh, as Kate Ponzo was saying, at the beginning of the last talk, I mean, some of uh, the older people uh, among us uh, have 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 been <laughs> at conferences before, but there's a new generation who has not known anything except for this uh, COVID uh, stuff. So uh, it's very nice to uh, be out of that. Uh, and uh, I'm the last speaker on this side of the ocean, so uh, I think we should also. Uh, thank the organizers, at least on this side, for uh... <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> so in homotopy theory, uh, we're used to having uh, a formal neighborhood of a rational point on a curve. And uh, Quillen defined a formal group law on that in certain situations, and this is very useful. Uh, but of course, it's better to have a, a whole curve instead of just having such a formal neighborhood. And uh, so I will uh, talk about how uh, this appears uh, in this situation of the Fock-Fontein curve. So uh, let me first say something about curves. So uh, if we have a curve and let's say regular and uh, connected <coughs> uh, over a field. Okay. Uh, like this. Uh, so then how can we understand this? So we can choose a closed point. And uh, when we remove this point, then uh, the curve becomes uh, affine. It could be affine to begin with, but uh, as soon as we punch a hole in it, it certainly is. And uh, this point uh, here also gives us a line bundle. Uh, like this, and uh, then we can identify X as price of the graded ring P, where P is the sum of the global sections of all the tensor powers of, of this line bundle, <laughs> like this. Okay, so, uh, so we want to calculate these global sections here. And uh, so this we will do uh, by, uh, by Roy Colmon. So, so we have we have this 
this curve X and now we remove a point. I think I'm going to take the Japanese chalk instead. So, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> And uh, like, uh, like Peter was explaining in his talk uh, on Monday, we should really think of this as a closed inclusion. And uh, the open complement is the formal completion of X along this point. So, well, Grotendick has, has, has told us that we should think of the formal completion of X at this point uh, as a tubular neighborhood. And this behaves as if it's it's open, and then this uh, open complement here behaves as if it's closed. So, so we will look at this Cartesian diagram here. <clears throat> and uh, this uh, this philosophy is uh, is. Uh, uh, substantiated from, uh, from looking at the stable infinity categories of quasi coherent sheaves on, uh, on these pieces. So, so this formal completion behaves as if it's open and uh, the open complement behaves as if it's closed. And uh, Peter constructed this diagram in his uh, talk on Monday. So, uh, so now the global sections of this line bundle and also it's H1, there's only H0 and H1 because it's a force coherent sieve uh, are given uh, by uh, the code, the limits and the co-limit of the diagram where we take the global sections on X with the point removed and then the restriction to here, uh, this maps to the global sections of this punctured formal neighborhood and also the restriction of the line bundle there. And uh, finally, uh, here. Okay, so, so now let me take a very simple curve and uh, show and, and explain what this looks like. Uh, and we're going to see this diagram some, some time. So maybe I will give it such a star so we can refer to it. <laughs> So what if we just take the projective line uh, over a field, for example, the complex numbers? Excuse me, Lars, uh, there was a question in the chat. Uh, uh -huh. Why is Y without the infinity non-empty? Uh, asked it, by Shane Kelly. Well, he <laughs> should know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, this will look at a spurf of a complete discrete valuation ring, and then this will be spurf of its uh, quotient field. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I shouldn't call it like that. So, uh, but <laughs> yeah, in the so. So then we choose a coordinate at infinity. I'm going to call that coordinate T inverse. And uh, so then if we look at this diagram here, we get, here we get the polynomial algebra. Uh, here we get the Laurent polynomial algebra on C inverse. And then inside here, we get 
uh, t to the n times uh, <clears throat> uh, this power series ring on uh, t inverse. So uh, now we can calculate uh, the cohomology for for n greater than or equal to zero, uh, a zero uh, is uh, an n plus one dimensional C vector space generated by one C up to T to the n and H one is zero. Uh, and for n uh, less than zero, uh, h zero is zero, and h one uh, is uh, is a, a, a C vector space generated by by these elements. In particular, if, if, if n is minus one, uh, then minus one plus one is zero. And then this is interpreted as being the empty set. So it's, it's one is zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your diagram there is H, the map from- That's the composition. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, should I also write down what P is? Let's see, I should watch this. Maybe I don't write down what P is. Uh, so in, instead, let me do uh, the twist of projective line. So uh, the projective line over C has two real forms, uh, the real projective line and the twister projective line, which is uh, the very variety of the quaternions. So this has, has no real points. Every closed point has rest to field the complex numbers. Uh, but when we extend scalars up to C, we get the projective line over C. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so we choose again a coordinate uh, at infinity at some closed point. And uh, now this diagram then looks like this. So here we have the same as before. And uh, here, this map is determined by uh, saying that u plus iv is t, and u minus iv is minus t inverse. Yeah, so there's this minus here. <laughs> uh, so this is, is defined over r. So. So, so these algebras here in the bottom are really only real algebras, and the reason that we have a the reason that we have a C here is because if we have a complete discrete valuation ring with rest to field of characteristic zero, then there exists a coefficient field. So there exists a splitting, but uh, well, in this case you can just write it down, but. Uh, in general, this only exists because of the axiom of choice, and maybe it's not so useful. Uh, however, what is very what is completely canonical is the t-adic filtration. So the t-adic filtration uh, is 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 completely canonical, and it induces a, a filtration on these cohomology groups. Uh, and let me just give the non-zero pieces for that filtration. 
So, uh, so for for n greater than or equal to zero, uh, the mth graded piece of H zero x o x n is uh, is r times one if m is zero, and is c times t to the m if m is between one and uh, n. And there's no h1. And let me also say for n less than zero. Oops, one. <clears throat> So we have C times T to the M for uh, N plus one less than or equal to M less than or equal to minus one. Uh, and then finally C mod R times one when M is zero. <laughs> so, so here for uh, when N is minus one where for the projective line we get zero here instead we get this C mod R. Uh, which, uh, which is the difference between the, the field of definition or the, the global sections and then the rest of field uh, at close points. Uh, and and uh, so the, f I know, and the, uh, so the Fock von Ten curve is a morally a periodic version of this uh, twist of projective line. Yeah, I mean, this is a, what, can I say what the theatic filtration is? Yeah, so I mean, so if you have a curve and you take the completed local ring at a closed point, then that is a complete discrete valuation ring when it's a regular point. And uh, that's, so T is a generator of the maximal ideal. <laughs> that was an answer, right? Yes. So, uh, okay, so now the, the Fockman Sigma curve. So, so this is a, this is so, this is associated with, uh, let's say in this, an algebraically closed, completely valued field of uh, characteristic P and closed points on this uh, correspond to uh, Frobenius orbits of isomorphism classes of characteristic zero on tilt of if. If you understand that, that's fine. If you don't, then it, it, it doesn't really matter for, for this talk. Uh, so again, we, we choose a point and uh, a coordinate at, at this closed point. <laughs> and uh, the residue field at this point is, is then such an algebraically closed, completely valued field of characteristic zero. Uh, and the perfect nature of, of the situation also gives you this uh, identification of uh, the tilt of C uh, with F. Uh, so in this situation, this diagram here, so, So instead of the polynomial ring, we get uh, a ring, which is called BE. It's a, also a, a principal ideal domain. And instead of uh, the complete discrete valuation field of 
uh, the wrong theories we get. Uh, this field, which is called B the wrong, it's also a complete discrete evaluation field. And uh, here we get uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it has a filtration where fill zero is the valuation ring, fill minus one is the maximal ideal in the valuation ring and so on. And so this is what this diagram gives in the case of the uh, Fakhrensen curve. Uh, let me also write down what, uh, what the cohomology looks like. Oops. So again, we we have like this. So for uh, n greater than or equal to zero, the only non-zero graded pieces of the cohomology uh, are like this. So we get QP times one if m is zero and c times t to the m if m is between uh, one and n. So in the same way as here, uh, we had the real numbers and the complex numbers. Here we have uh, qp and then this huge field. But now, of course, this is uh, here c is two dimensional over r, but this is uncountably dimensional over QP. So uh, yeah, so it's different, <laughs> but also much the same. And uh, for in negative, uh, again, we have C times T to the M if n plus one is less than or equal to m is less than or equal to minus one. And when m is zero, we uh, get c mod qp. So again, this, uh, this, this difference between the field of definition or the field of global sections and the residue field at the closed points uh, shows up here as h1 of ox of minus one. Okay, so now uh, how can we produce something like this from homotopy theory? <laughs> Sorry, Lars, maybe you said it, but could you please say again, what is this field C? It's the residue field at the closed point. Is there some other description of that field? No. Okay. But uh, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a characterization of what fields appear in this way. And the fields that appear are all the characteristic zero on tilts of F. If F is spherically complete, then they are all isomorphic in the same way. So here for the twist of projects applying all the residue fields at the closed points were all isomorphic to C. Here, this is not necessarily the case. It's the case if, if, if is spherically, spherically complete, uh, but otherwise it's not, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so how are we going to produce this? So maybe I will, let me take a new board. Uh, maybe I can take this one. So uh, let's begin by looking at the. Let's begin by looking at the bottom line. So where we have these. Uh, uh, 
these complete this complete discrete valuation field because that's the kind of thing that we are that we are used to in homotopy theory. So, so how do we get that? Uh, yeah. Well, you know. So we consider. Uh, a commutative algebra in spectra with an action by uh, the circle group. And uh, which uh, have a, a bot element, uh, beta in I2, of the fixed points. So we'll see what bot element is when we get there. <laughs> so, uh, so if we have that, uh, then we obtain uh, the lower line in here. Uh, by doing the following, uh, well, sorry, I should say from, we take the Tate spectrum of this spectrum with a circle action, uh, and then we do the following. Uh, we invert the bot element And so this Tate spectrum is the abutment of, a, of the Tate spectral sequence, which you get from uh, the Posnikov filtration of E. And uh, so that spectral sequence gives a filtration on, this, uh, on these homotopy groups, which uh, I will call the Nygaard filtration. <laughs> So, so this is uh, this is Nygaard complete. But now, when we invert the bot element, it's no longer Nygaard complete. So we Nygaard complete it. And then finally, uh, we uh, extract uh, the ring of. Uh, so let me say the degree zero part. So after these two steps, so we begin with a graded ring, it's still graded, but now we take out just what we have in degree zero. Okay. Uh, and <clears throat> oops, maybe I can. Maybe I can write here what this is going to. So let's see. So we we have this Tate spectrum. Uh, then we invert the bot element, uh, and then we Nygaard complete it, and then we take the degree zero part. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, now let's look at that in. So the, the classical situation in, in homotopy theory uh, is, that, is that the circle action uh, on E is trivial or more trivializable. And, <clears throat> so, so if the U1 action uh, on 
E is is trivializable, then it's trivialization. It gives a map from from E, or rather it's it's base change to a point uh, to the fixed points and then to the seat. So, so when the action is, is trivial, then the homotopy groups of the Tate spectrum become algebras over the homotopy groups of E. Uh, and so, so this identifies non-canonically uh, this ring. Uh, here with so take take a uh, homotopy group of the underlying ring invert the part elements and take the degree zero part of that and then it's Laurent polynomials uh, over this in some local parameter which is of course uh, non-canonical. So let me call this ring here R. So, so what this looks like is uh, it looks like uh, the punctured formal neighborhood. Uh, Excuse me, what is that? Yeah, uh, let, let me write that. <clears throat> I, I will write it. So, so let's see. So we have, uh, so we have B U one, which projects down to a point, and then that has a section. And uh, now on on spectra, we then have. like this. So it's just the underlying spectrum. <laughs> okay, so so this corresponds uh, to uh, to the punctured formal neighborhood. Uh, of an R rational point uh, on uh, on a curve. So we don't have the curve, but if we had uh, if we had a curve and if we had an R rational point, then the punctured formal neighborhood at that point would look like this. So so note here that. Uh, that the reason that we get a, a rational point corresponds to the to to uh, to to the fact that the u one action was trivial. So now, in the case of uh, uh, of the Fock-Fontaine curve and also the twist of projective line. The points are not rational, so there are no rational points on on those curves. Uh, so the E that we're looking for should not have a trivial circle action. And uh, so, so as Kate Poncho was also. Uh, 
talking about in, in, in her lecture. Uh, we have a good spectrum with a non-trivial circle action, namely Hochschild homology or topological Hochschild homology. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, <clears throat> So for the Fock consent curve, uh, <clears throat> here uh, we consider uh, E, which is TH8. Of, so we have picked this point which has residue field C and that has a valuation ring OC. The value, this is not a discrete valuation ring. So the value group is dense in the real line. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we take this and then we P complete it. <laughs> okay, so this is, A commutative algebra in spectra with circle action, and now the circle action is uh, non trivial. Uh, we also have a plot element. For example, it comes from the image by the cyclotomic trace of the plot element in algebraic K theory. Uh, and this lives in in pi two of the homotopy fixed set uh, of E. Uh, and this uh, pi two here is a rank one module over pi zero, uh, but the bot element is not a generator. Uh, so there's a generator U and then this is uh, a non-unit times uh, that generator. And And the, now the structure of the Tate spectrum uh, is uh, calculated in in uh, Bartmore Schulze's uh, second paper, so by a BMS two. Uh, so if we take this Tate spectrum, invert the bot elements. Nygaard complete and take the degree zero part, uh, then we precisely get this uh, complete discrete valuation field uh, be the RAM, which appeared uh, in, so, so this Fontaine ring, uh, which appeared in the diagram. And the, the T-adic filtration of this, uh, of this valuation field, discrete valuation field is, uh, corresponds to the Nygaard filtration. So the filtration that comes from the spectral sequence. <clears throat> okay, so, but this is what we're used to in, in, in homotopy theory to get uh, this kind of thing. What about this affine piece? So, so this part, which was uh, Fontaine's ring B E. Uh, so this we get 
uh, from Uh, the balance on fiber square uh, by uh, Ben Antio, Akil Matthew, Matthew Morrow, and Thomas Nikolaus. <laughs> and uh, let me just say that from, from what they do in that paper, uh, there's a map from pi star of k of OC mod p completed at p, uh, bot element inverted, degree zero part, and then uh, to this thing here. And again, uh, from BMS2, uh, this is canonically identified with BE. This is B de Ron. And uh, this crystalline turn character from uh, the Bailey Sun Fiber Square paper gives uh, this map that you need to build the curve. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it's not nice that we have to divide out by P here. So we would like to find a way where we can construct this homotopy type here. Uh, from OC or from C. Uh, yeah, so this indicates that there's a localizing invariant missing uh, that gives this, this homotopy type and also that map. Uh, let me just in the last minute, say something about, I have five minutes left. Okay, then I can <laughs> go slower. So uh, <clears throat> what about the, yeah. So what about the, what about the twist of predictive line? Uh, <clears throat> so we choose some point uh, the residue field will then be isomorphic to the complex numbers and uh, so we might consider uh, to take E to be T88 or H8 of, of C. <clears throat> uh, but the problem with this is that th th this has no body element. <clears throat> If we take the homotopy fixed, so this is just C. And if we take the homotopy fixed points, uh, it only has homotopy groups in negative degrees. There's no bot element. So, yeah. Uh, but now from, uh, from uh, Dustin and Peter's uh, development of, of, of liquid mathematics, uh, they have uh, <clears throat> they describe the real numbers as a quotient uh, of uh, a ring of uh, convergent uh, power series with integer coefficients. And uh, if we use that as our base instead, then we get uh, <clears throat> then we get a part of one.
What is too high? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so instead, we take this to be H8 or TH8 of C and then relative to this uh, this ring here where T uh, is mapped to some real number between zero and one. <laughs> and uh, so if we do that, uh, then uh, we get uh, <clears throat> then we get a bot element and this here becomes a uh, it gives us this piece uh, in what? Right. I'm just commenting that this will be defined over the real numbers already. Yes, but my residue field is C. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, but now there is the qu the question uh, about uh, the affine piece. So and so this is a question of the same kind as the question over here. What is a, a reasonable dis? How can what is the localizing invariance that gives us this term here uh, applied to perfect OC modules or maybe nuclear C vector spaces, nuclear solid C vector spaces. So first you have to find that. And uh, maybe if you have a good idea that there that uh, could give you uh, a hint to how to define this. So, so there's a missing uh, localizing invariance uh, that uh, that we would like to find. So let me stop there.